In this video I'm going to parabolize a 12 inch f7.6 mirror and this is the fun part of making a telescope mirror to parabolize a mirror. Here you see a BVC uh, mirror that I'm finishing up polishing and I'm going to show you how to parabolize it. I'm polishing this mirror on a Draper type polishing machine that I built and it works pretty much like doing it by hand and also I noticed that I'm polishing with a mirror on top which I highly recommend anytime I can to avoid astigmatism uh, of course unless the mirror is too big look at the mirror running here and you notice it kind of jerks back and forth a little bit which means I have poor contact with the pitch so I'm going to take it off and take a look at it um, on the Ronke Okay, so here's the mirror after polish. This is the first time on the tester. This is a ronky screen outside of focus. And I move back and forth. You can see a rolled edge and you can see a center zone. Okay, to get better contact with the pitch, I used a piece of turkey bag and pressed it into the lap. And you can see the grooves in the pitch that it left. In addition, I'm going to take a, a wire brush and scuff up each of the, the pitch squares and that will give me good contact. Here's what the Ronke looks like inside of focus. After I polish the mirror for an, another hour on my machine, it doesn't show a lot of information, but the edge is, is better and there's still a, a center zone. To test my mirror, I'm going to be using the modified Offner Null with my Zygo interferometer. And this test uses a Plano convex null lens on the interferometer. Uh, the flat surface is the reference surface. And it also uses a small uh, field lens some distance away. With this particular focal length mirror, I don't need the field lens. So the test is even simpler. With So here's my mirror under the interferometer and for the most part the fringes are pretty straight uh, except for a zone in the center you might think that the the fringes at the edge are due to a rolled edge but it's not the case my interferometer doesn't have aperture focusing uh, and a diffraction effect will look like the edge is rolled off so in fact the edge is very good I have a, a zone in the center that needs to be fixed um, it's a hill and not a hole. Uh, you can't really determine that unless you refocus the mirror carriage. And when I focus longer, the fringes in the center zone become straight. So that tells me the radius is longer and I know that it's um, a hill. And that's what I would expect uh, uh, coming off of this polisher. I usually get an oblate spheroid, and uh, which always has a high center. That's from the fact that the when the mirror goes off the edge, the edge uh, doesn't get polished as much and you get more pressure on the 70% zone. With a null test, a uh, perfect mirror will show straight fringes, evenly spaced and parallel. So interpretation is very easy. You can just look at it and tell if the mirror is good or not. When I parabolize, I like to use the sub-diameter tool straight out of Texero's book uh, using a W stroke with the mirror on the bottom. You see it here running on my machine, uh, I'm working it by hand, and you could do the same thing with walking around the barrel. Um, this puts in correction, and if I overshoot it, if I put it in too much correction, I can bring it back with a full-sized uh, lap with a mirror on top. To avoid astigmatism, you want to be sure and stop every few minutes and rotate your mirror on, on the holder. Um, I've seen guys make a really bad mistake by actually taping their mirror down to the spindle and not rotating it, and that's sure to cause astigmatism. So rotate your mirror frequently. A sub-diameter lap is very aggressive compared to the full-size lap. 
So it's easy, easy to dig a hole if you run it too long. So you want to run short periods. I'm going to run this about 10 minutes and then check and see what the progress is. Another thing is that the PVC glass is very soft, so it removes easily. So I'm going to be on the conservative side and not run this any more than 10 minutes for this first session. Okay, here's my mirror after a 10 minute polishing session with a sub diameter tool. The middle zone uh, looks similar, but it's a little bit uh, less curved than it uh, initially was. Um, I definitely didn't overdo it, so um, looks like I can just continue uh, using the sub diameter lap, maybe go a little bit longer next time. Okay, after another 15 minutes of polishing uh, with a sub diameter lap, uh, this is what the interferogram looks like. Uh, it's quite a bit better. You see that the deviation in the center now is it's less than a fringe. And that's one fringe on the wavefront, which is a half fringe on the surface. One, one fringe on the surface would be about 315 nanometers. So it's coming along well. And since I'm getting close now, I'm going to go just five minutes again on my sub diameter lap. After polishing another five minutes with a sub diameter lap, this is what my mirror looks like. It's getting very close, uh, but I can still see a residual bump in the center. So I'm going to give it another a couple of minutes with a sub diameter, and that hopefully that'll be gone. After another two minutes of polishing with a sub diameter lap, this is what the mirror looks like. And my center bump is completely gone. But I'm still not happy because now look at the edge, it's turned. And the question is, is it turned up or turned down? And when the uh, interferogram looks like this, it's sometimes hard to determine even by checking the radius. So if you look at this uh, snapshot, it's a snapshot of, of the mirror where I took my hot finger and pushed it on the mirror. And I can tell from that that it's the bump from my finger is convex and that the edge is rolled down and not up, meaning it's, uh, it's overcorrected on the edge. So I'm going to go back with a full size tool for a little bit. Okay, I gave the mirror another 10 minutes with a full-size lap, and a full-size lap tends to push it back towards an oblate, as I said before, which raises the edge, which is what I needed. So that worked, and my mirror looks very good. Uh, in this interferogram, you can see a little bit of residual defocus, but the fringes are straight with maybe all oh, a tenth wave of regularity on it, so um, this will be a, a dynamite uh, primary mirror for a chief telescope. Now this mirror has uh, at f7.6 about a one quarter of the aspheric deviation that a, a, a Dobsonian f4 primary mirror would have. But still, uh, we're, uh, I think my total time here was 42 minutes figuring which is pretty quick, um, and pretty simple. So I can't understand why uh, some of the top uh, premium telescope mirrors go for $2,000 in a 12 inch size. So that was a lot of fun to do. And parabolizing a mirror with my setup is pretty simple. Yeah. But you might ask, uh, can any ATM do the same thing? And Probably not. Uh, an interferometer and null lens is going to be rather expensive. But you can build a bath interferometer like the one pictured here. I built this one using uh, some components I had laying around. Uh, a laser pointer, a beam splitting prism, half ball lens, and a piece of mirror. 
and you can do the same thing and, and there you can look up uh, the interferometry group on Yahoo to get more information on doing that. Um, the only difference is uh, that's not a null setup. In my case I'm working from curved fringes and I want to work towards straight fringes but with a bath setup you'll be starting with a sphere which will give you straight fringes and you have to work towards uh, the curved fringes and you need the uh, fringe analysis software that is available on the Yahoo group to analyze your fringes and uh, do an artificial null on the fringes. But it's doable and uh, it's a good test so look them up. Thank you.